My name is Raps and welcome back to Slay the Spire. Modded in particular. All right, next character off the rank is the Construct, uh, because obviously we'll be skipping over Marissa here because we've done a lot of Marissa episodes in a row and we did the two beaked ones recently. The Construct, your mega, your mega, your upgraded Construct cards can be mega upgraded outside of combat. Uh, if you're wondering why you don't have Clockwork Phoenix as your opening relic for this character, you need to win a run with them. Uh, wait a sec. Win a run with them and then go into config and turn it on. At the same level, here in config, I have also enabled the untested expansion cards so that I can play with the burn synergies and show off the really incredibly cool overheat counter that Moose made. Encounter a random event probably 100% of the time here. Okay. Ah, transform, upgrade a card, sure. Nice! All right, so we lost the defend and we picked up rollout. Rollout, overheat 15. Overheat, the mechanic by which when too many cards cycled in one turn, so this used to be, I believe, uh, it, it didn't reset per turn and now it does. Or maybe I didn't understand it previously. Uh, transform this card into a burn for the rest of the combat. So this is to disincentivize just going for like a strong cycle build. Uh, deals damage equal to three times the number of cards that have cycled this turn. The mega upgraded version is going to be overheat 20, deal equal to four times. So what we want is a deck that cycles, but cycles no more than 10 cards a turn, because I don't want to get it super dodgy. Uh, hmm, how are we going to influence that? Interesting. So here it is, the overheat meter. Doesn't it just look really cool? Like, really? Like, ah. Uh, so cool. And you can see it increment every single time that we cycle through a card. It's about to break a five point right there. But, rollout's already lethal. I don't actually want to take any of these. I want to go all the way with the burn synergy. I'm happier trying to force a synergy when... Hang on in seconds. I just need to consider this. I can't make my strikes ethereal or anything like that. I don't want it. Okay. Um, nor do that. Damn. I'm happier trying to force a strategy when I have not managed to play with that strategy yet. So that's why in the Ascension grind and Heartbreaker runs and things like that, I'll oftentimes argue that you need to go with the flow. You need to kind of, you know, be, oh, I should have done strike first, obviously. Though. Uh, need to be a little bit more malleable, that kind of thing. Uh, whereas here I'm making the opposite argument. Get to cycle all those strikes, get back to the rollout, and then murder. Nice. Zapper versus Scrap Cannon versus Tumble. Uh, draw three cards for each one that cycles, deal four. Okay, we'll take Tumble, actually. Purple Fire Spirits. Probably you just drop a strike. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna mega upgrade that rollout. Very much need some cycling things soon. Okay, so attack mode is gonna be really good here. Right. Because now I'm not going to have any defense stay in my hand because the defense cycle if you don't have the decks. Right. I could attack mode here again. And then tumble and we get the rollout and then kill. Great. Wasp Nest. Replay the Spire. Wow, I actually haven't even seen this. Every time you lose HP in combat, draw three. Uh, draw three. I was hearing the Centennial Puzzle in my hand. The first time you lose HP each combat, draw three cards. Every time you lose HP in combat, gain two thorns. Like a bee nest, but more evil. Overclock. That's more draw. Scope Core. Ooh, that's going to be really, really good for us. I could have played Rollout there, but it does no damage that turn. 
So I'll defend, attack mode, tumble. Mm -hmm. And attack mode again. I'm just setting myself up for a kill next turn. Hey, roll out. Ah, uh, no, I don't want any of those. I'm, I'm going with the cycling build. You can no longer become weakened? Yeah, that's pretty damn powerful for this build. I'm going to upgrade Scope Core and probably Mega Upgrade it, but then the problem becomes longer fights will whew, be a problem. All right, so what did we lose? What did we get? Okay, we lost the Defend. We picked up a Backup. We can upgrade that again to be zero cost and not exhaust. That's the Mega Upgrade on it. Kunai. Um... No, it's not Kunai. Because of the way that the attack mode and defense mode work, we're basically just going to have to choose to only have attack or defense if we want to be able to cycle in order to increase the damage on the rollout. So if we play three attacks in a turn twice, we've nullified the dex loss from attack mode and we won't be cycling our defense. We have very few defense in the deck as it currently stands. I think I take the Sapphire key here. I know, any normal character normal that any base character and i would probably disagree with that action but this ain't a base character right, i'm backing up the attack mode Mm-hmm. Oh, cycle through as much of the deck as we can. I'm not going to play that extra attack mode. It's not going to change the amount of hits it takes for me to kill this sentry, but it would put itself back in the deck, which means I would have to redraw it, which would be a problem. Chameleon Ring. Your potions are now more potent. You can brew at rest sites as well as an emerald key. Probably none. Just a solid none right there. to gain that turn. That's the worst case scenario for me. Thankfully, I have lethal. Lock potion, force core. It's another cycling thing. We're going with a cycle heavy, aggressive build here, like a very aggressive build. Definitely attack mode. Got a tumble. All right, we did get another rollout in there. That's really good. That's what we were looking for. Okay. Cycled only one card. That's gonna be a problem. I have to block for a bunch this turn, exhaust those two. Thankfully, we've got a lot of damage in there though. All right. And rollout is ready to roll out. Hyper-aggressive. <sighs> Do we... 
I mean, we cycle a lot of cards and we use Tumble, so Antimatter would actually be like a nice finisher. Reduce your energy to zero. I mean, we would play it at the very end of the hand. Deal damage equal to five times the number of cards in your hand. So it would just be after we do everything else. Hmm. Mass production can be upgraded to be... Mega upgraded, rather, to be one cost, which would give me a whole deck of just nothing but scope calls and stuff like that. But I'm worried that in that, I would be burning my rollouts. I'm going to take an antimatter as a damage dealer. This is a little bit more frustrating, though. It's got to be slow cooker out of these. I need the extra energy is the problem. Our turn one really matters. So losing two energy on turn one's really rough. Uh, honey jar, draw one more card each turn. Retain up to one card each turn. Extra choices on card reward screens. Uh, on pickup, you gain one potion slot and you cannot skip rewards. That's the problem. You cannot skip rewards is going to make it really difficult to use Honey Jar for us. But we would be able to retain rollout for the right turn and stuff like that. The problem is we have one mega upgraded rollout. With the ability to mega upgrade cards, you're incentivized to have a thinner deck with more mega upgraded cards rather than a broader or thicker deck that has fewer mega upgraded cards because of how powerful they can be. Especially because the scope core is mega upgraded, it is going to be putting a scope core extra into the discard pile, and that puts another scope core into the discard pile. So I think we actually need to be able to cycle through. And I also want the extra energy. Slow cooker is going to be a problem. We definitely need something like Lantern to help us uh, live while we use it, frankly. That could have been a lot worse. Mm -hmm. Back up the rollout. I'm going to go for a buff each. Yeah, it's actually fine by me. And that'll do. Not weaken us, but you can make us frail. Hmm. None of them cycled. Interesting. <clears throat> Second rollout, though. Obviously. Oh, I really need all of this gold, but also it's very important you have a very powerful turn one. Uh, here, and we won't. Uh, I mean, hang on. I've had worse turn ones than turn one killing bear. I've had much worse turn ones than turn one killing... I have had so much worse. <laughs> oh, oh no. Hey, cycled a bunch of those cards. Now we can just murder with Reckless Abandon. Red Mask is going to be very, very powerful for us in this build. Why is it going to be very powerful in this build? But that's a really good question. But if you stop interrupting me, I can explain. Damn it. Jeez. <laughs> uh, because we have one energy on turn one. So this will reduce the amount that we need to block on turn one. So handy. Remove card and upgrade a random card. Ooh, you know I'm about that life. Let's remove the defense mode. Upgrade a defend. All right. There's two things in here that I desperately want. Number one is Lee's Waffle. Just for the full heal, basically. I just want it to full heal me and increase my max HP by seven. And then I want Tumble for the extra draw. Uh, we also had Gremlin Food, whenever you rest upgrade a random card, as well as Beetle Shell, every 10th attack, sorry, every 10th time you gain block from a card, gain double that block. Uh, we don't really gain block at all. 
almost ever. It's very important that we mega upgrade one of these tumbles and then the other tumble. I'm going to make you up there in the back line languid. Okay, got a lot of thorns out of that. Took surprisingly little damage. Awesome. Yeah, not a huge fan of that shuffle, but am a huge fan of the fact that this rollout's gonna go wild. Woo, look at that. By Gremlin Leader? Old coin! Yes! Cyclip already played in this combat. Deal 12 damage, apply to weak and too vulnerable. Upgrades to 19. Don't know what the mega upgrade would be there. Hazard proof. Two block and one artifact? No, we're not a uh, build like that. Yeah, we'll pass. Right, the Mega Upgrade on Tumble increases its card draw to 7, which is obviously going to be really good for us. It's also very anti-matter. A bump up Mega Upgrade a random construct card. Hits a strike. That's what I was worried about. I'm going to back up the defend there. The reason that I did that is so that I have more cards in the first shuffles that are going to cycle. Okay. I want to use rollout now, but I know that antimatter is where we really get the damage from here. And if I roll out, then the antimatter won't hit. Okay. You can see we're getting very close to the cycle limit. When I say very close, what I mean is not really at all. I could be a lot clearer there, I guess. Yeah, this is what I was worried about. We cycled too many cards. Damn it, Icarus! Tiger Marble at the start of each combat, add a random card which exhausts to your hand. Uh, costs zero until it's played. Guard Core is a really nice way to gain some defense in this kind of deck. We'll drop the Smoke Bomb. And see the kind of thing that Targa Marble is going to provide for us. Uh, I desperately want to mega upgrade Guard Core so that I actually have some defense in this deck because we just don't really have any right now. Midas Touch. Everything we touch just turns to gold. Hmm. Weird. Those are lyrics. I'm happy to exhaust those. Mm. Draw two additional cards at the start of every turn. Seems like it'd be really good for us. And I'm also going to gain some plated armor. Why? Yeah, because it can. When a card is retained, gain two block. Yeah, it's not going to happen that often. Ow, ow, ow. But out of that ow comes... <clears throat> Don't stand me up here. I really need this. A lot of cards that refuse to cycle. There we go. That's what it... No! We burned our first rollout! 
Oh, right, because that one's unupgraded. Oh, yeah, that was always going to happen. Vajra thought he's going with one strength as well as... No, don't need another rollout. Need to mega upgrade the one I already have. It's my bad. It's not already kind of popping off. If I targeted both of those on the backliner, I think I could have killed them. Yeah, that was 19. Damn it. Ooh, that's not what I was looking for. Okay. At least we had lethal. Oh, Pre-upgraded rollout, though. Killing that unit gives me a lot more time with this Chosen here. And we can guarantee the lethal next turn thanks to the thing that we just did. With the backup. Mm -mm. Mega upgraded, 6 damage and 30. It's really powerful, innate retain. Put this on top of your draw pile. Yeah, no, we'll destroy that instantly, kind of. If I don't rest here, I lose. Hell, still might lose. Okay, Purity definitely needs to remove those two strikes. They are garbage. That's a bunch of pyramid runes that have just been added to our deck. I mean, those can be used to make our antimatter pretty big. I don't know if we're over aggressive enough. Could back up tumble tumble. Okay, we're about to burn one of our rollouts, but not importantly, not the one that's currently in hand. Seventy eight damage there. Another fifty eight there. Cool. Uh, it is imperative that we start, and that'll do it. <laughs> How'd that happen to me? Whenever you draw a card, take one damage. I did not see that that effect had been applied, but that's my bad. Woo! Uh, no, I can't take any of those. really wanted extra energy. Sardis come back confused. Confusion can never increase the cost of a card by more than one. First card you draw, each card will always cost zero. Because all of our cards, let's be real, all of them, well, most of them, uh, cost one. Some of them cost zero. 
that's most likely not beneficial for us. I'll, ha I'll... And I can't take the Pandora's box. Can I? Maybe I have to take the Pandora's box. The weakest element of this deck is those strikes and stuff. And the fact that I have to get to my first attack mode before they start cycling. Okay. I regret everything. That's a grand snacker. Ooh. Woo. Well, uh, I'll tell you one thing. This is going to be interesting. Really want to guarantee an early shop here. Memory tap gives us oh, just a lot of garbage cards. Whew. All right, all right. We can do it. We can do it. It's fine. Hey, there's my orb. Okay, got a fair few cycles off there. That was good. Roll out, roll out. Anger, anti-matter for the kill. Right, adrenaline potion, no. Any of those. How many pals do we play? Like literally one, so mummified hand is a little weak here. Medical kit, unplayable status cards can now be played. Whenever you play a status card, exhaust it. That seems very much a board, and so it's Bag of Marbles, actually. We'll take those two and remove probably point defense. But mega upgraded point defense is actually a lot of block for us, so we could just consider waiting and mega upgrading that. Attack mode's actually no longer necessary. And we do need to thin down the deck a little. Quick attack literally does nothing for us, though. Alright, so... I think I'll hold out and wait for another shop before I do anything else. Mm -mm. I don't know if we'll scale as fast as they will, but I know that they're going to put a lot of burns in it. Ah! They put a lot of burns in our hand, and then we just play them. Uh, okay, we'll fight them. <sighs> Come on, burn me, I dare you. Gain Thornsy with my current decks, which is none. That'll do. Play those to make space in our hand. Now I'll use Tumble to make sure that I draw my antimatter, which I knew was in there. exactly how I wanted that one to go, but that's okay. I guess. There we go. Infinite Journal. Cards can be upgraded any number of times. Alright, we'll see how that goes. Overcharge at the start of your turn, gain an energy and add a burn to your hand. That's really good for us, just because we immediately burn the burn. Upgrade all cards. You can no longer heal. Mm, can't do that. Fight a boss from Act 1 for a rare relic. Ooh, reserves just got added to our hand. That's really good. Thank you. Because it was added to our hand, we don't have the downside of not being able to play it. Great. We're on our second deck shuffle already. That's really good. Ooh. 
and more than in position to kill this spike slime. Awesome. Potato, during your turn, you're immune to damage. All right. Take another of those, though. Cleaving could actually be like a, a really good finisher here, so. Okay, and then we'll use cleaving there. What? If this kills an enemy, this card stays in your hand and costs zero for the turn. Ah, oh, it doesn't count as killing in it. So it doesn't count as killing an enemy because the Darklings technically count as a group as one enemy. But the thing is, they count as that for things that care about minions. However, Gremlin Horn gives you an energy whenever you kill a Darkling. So it's inconsistent across the board. That's one thing I would like addressed in the base game because it, it does have that inconsistency. And also, they aren't marked as minions, but they aren't affected if you don't... If you kill the first one with uh, feed. Weird. Oh, hard reboot, though. No, I can't do that. Intriguing, but I can't. I should have. Okay, how many rollouts do I still have left in the deck? Just the one. It's fine. That is to say, just the one powerful one. We have two in there. By using that reboot when we did, we guaranteed that we were going to cycle through a lot more cards this turn. Although, unfortunately, not drawing any of our tumbles makes it really difficult on us. Just going to try and make sure that my cycles are absolutely ridiculous for next turn. goes nothing. Don't draw a bunch of burns. Well, we drew a bunch of burns, but we also got the tumble, which is good enough. Our rollout could have died there, but we had the antimatter just in case. That's why I didn't burn the antimatter on the turn prior. Uh, deflated dodgeball, you have a 10% chance to dodge attack. Second copy of overcharge. That's probably too much. But when the deck gets relatively thin, we actually tumble into tumble a lot of the time. No, it's too much. And we also get the smiling march, uh, the smiling mask, rather. Merchant's card removal service now always costs 50 gold. Deep breath. Oh no, sadistic danger, obviously. That's going to be hilarious. Metronome increases strength for every sequential attack blade up to a maximum of 10. Playing a non-attack resets the bonus, so does taking HP damage. We'll rest yet again. Yes, I wanted to mega upgrade, but... Uh, gotta settle. Awesome. 
Those scope calls are going to be real damage dealers in this combat. Because of the sadistic na uh, nature, obviously. Alright. Synchronize. Whenever you draw two cards, the same type in a row, deal eight damage to all enemies. We have too many different types of cards to rely on that. We get Mysterious Pyramids. When picked up, choose two cards. Whenever you draw one of these, also draw the other. Uh, that's... Hmm. Let's make it scope core and guard core. Should help us get our sight. Oh, hang on. Okay. Hubris says that uh, Hubris is uh, the serious pyramid say uh, whenever you draw scope core or guard core, draw the other. Cycle occurs on draw. I believe what it's actually doing is when you draw a scope core or a guard core, place the other in your hand. Now, the reason that's important is because there are things that are trigger on draw. Not only is there cycle, but confusion randomizes effect on draw, randomizes cost rather on draw, as uh, another one to immediately think of. Synchronize obviously respects on draw as well. Thankfully, we dodged that attack. And now we actually have energy. Okay, not much, but we do have some. Probably just wait here. Let the enemy take their own fair share of damage. That's a lot of cycling right there. Fine, we'll just destroy the enemy. Reinforce mega upgrade, no. Unfortunately, not a defensive deck, so we can't really take much advantage of that. Bomb picked up upgrade to attacks. Okay. Magic Flask. At campfires, the rest option now may be taken for free. This consumes one use. Start with two uses. Kill a boss to gain two more uses. Definitely take the Whetstone. Also gonna take the magic flask and then card remove. Focus beam. Unfortunately, we don't have much draw in this opening hand. All right. This could become a big problem. Let's tumble. Hmm, none of those cycles, okay. That's... That's one way to do that. Choose a non rare card in the draw pile. Uh, exhaust your entire hand and replace it with copies of that. Obviously, we can't do that. Okay. I 
could replace my entire hand. Oh, no, I can't replace my entire hand with the antimatter. Right. Forgot about that. Managed to cycle one card there. The extra energy out. Event steam. It's the weakness. All right then. Do your worst. Yet again, try and keep myself on top of some HP. Come on, cycle more of those cards. That'll do it. 10 foot pole, not useful to us. Add three burns to your hand, this card, uh, this turn your next card is played three times. That's really good. Because three burns to our hand is fine. We just play them. Reserves is also really powerful for us, but I'm going to take the afterburners. All right, now I'm going to rest for free. And try and make more guard calls for the deck. Tell me how many lights do you see? Three as well as one plasma. Point defense is actually really important. Okay. I'm gonna hard reboot here. The reason is I want the deck to be really thin so that we can cycle our orbs a lot better. Now, afterburners on the sadistic nature. Then hard reboot that hand. Another guard core. Tumble. Mm -hmm. The scope cores are now dealing a pretty ridiculous amount of damage. And our deck is a lot of scope cores right now, which is great. I'm taking attack damage, lose one focus, cannot go below zero focus. Okay. Let's afterburners the rollout here. We'll throw in an antimatter. And I wouldn't be surprised if just the scope cores killed next turn. No, that didn't happen. That's okay though, because the Grand Sneko is now dead. We enter self-destruct mode, and we ask ourselves, have we been here? I didn't take the... So... The reason I got the magic flask was so that I could rest as well as take the key. Uh... Oh, God. Lame! My bad. But that was a really cool showcase of some of those new burn cards. We were going in one direction with the overload, which is to benefit from 
cycling a lot of cards uh, just up to a limit. The other archetype you can oftentimes go into is intentionally including burns in your deck. So a card named Oil Spill is really good. Uh, we've tried to show off Oil Spill before, but now it works. It's real cool. Uh, or to have very few cards in your deck that cycle and cards that have very overload low... Sorry, very low overload limits. Those cards typically being more powerful. For the moment... My name is Mrapsity, the name of the game has been Slay This Maya modded. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. That has been the Construct character mod. Uh, all of the mods that I play in each and every episode of this series are linked in the description down below, as well as all of my contents on this game, past, present, and future, as well as my Twitter and my Discord, just in case uh, that's the thing you're particularly interested in. Also, at the very bottom, uh, because I kind of try and hide it, is, uh, because, uh, is, is my patron. If, if you're interested, there's no content gated off uh, exclusively for patrons. Everyone still gets all the same content at the same time, uh, but there are a few cool little perks that you can find over on that page. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you next time.